My, my name is uh, Alfred Smith Landry. I, uh, I was the youngest of uh, six children of the family of uh, Paul Anthony Landry and Emma Segura Landry. Uh, I was brought up on East Main Street in New Iberia, Louisiana. At that time, I was born the same year that uh, my uh, brother Jacob, who was 20 years older than me, graduated from law school. And uh, he was not able to uh, practice law because he was not yet 21. So uh, he went to, uh, to Washington to work for a congressman. W Whit Martin was the name of the congressman. And, uh, and uh, then I was just brought up. My father was a sheriff. Uh, until 1940, so it was, I guess, presumed that I was going to be a lawyer too. Nobody ever thought about anything else, medicine, any other profession. And so I, I went to St. Peter's College here in New Ivory, which was a high school, 1 through 11, and then went to UL, and then I went into uh, the service, and uh, I went to the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy after going overseas. and. Uh, then I uh, came back and uh, sailed on a ship as a third engineer for a while, and, uh, and then I went to law school at Tulane and finished, finished in 1950. Uh, I was named after Al Smith, who was a Catholic, who was considered as a candidate for uh, president. Now, I also had a, uh, a, a grandfather named, uh, a great-grandfather named Jacob Smith. One of my brothers was named Jacob, and so I guess they used those two pretexts to, to, to tag me with Smitty. My name is, my formal name is Alfred Smith Benjamin Landry. I guess they needed a, a saint's name in there, so they threw that Benjamin in there. At, at, U, at UL, I started out, and I was in pre-law, and I got four semesters in there before I went into the service, and then at the Birch Marine Academy, I studied marine engineering. I got. I have a, a degree in uh, marine transportation from the Merchant Marine Academy. I, my mother never wanted me to continue going to sea, and so I, uh, after I got out of the academy, I got on a ship out of uh, New Orleans, and it was a, it was a passenger uh, banana ship called the Antigua United Fruit Company, and we'd go to Havana entertain the passengers and then go to Guatemala. Every two weeks we'd come back. Guatemala, we picked up the bananas and came back to New Orleans. And, uh, without my being aware of it, during that summer of 1947, my mother uh, arranged through my brother to have me admitted to law school. So one September when the ship came in, they said, you're in law school. So I went to law school. I didn't know a thing about law school. I, I walked into some class with a professor named Mitchell Franklin. Nobody ever understood Mitchell Franklin. I mean, even the seniors didn't understand what he was talking about. But I presumed that they did. And it wasn't until later, till I got to be friendly with some of them, that I found out that they didn't understand what he was talking about either. And that was my introduction to law school. But I enjoyed law school three years at Tulane and started practicing here. In, uh, in New Ivory with my brother Jacob and, uh, and Jack Cousin and uh, Guyton Watkins, both of whom, are, all of whom are now deceased. And uh, we practiced in a little two-story building uh, on there near the corner of Main and Fisher Street. The building is still there. Dupuy Insurance Agency was on the bottom floor. We were on the top. And I practiced there for a couple of years and I was called into active duty in the Navy and, uh, and left and went, uh, uh, was assigned to a ship, the USS Helen, a cruiser, a heavy cruiser. And we went to Korea and bombed the coast of Korea for a couple of years. I came back and by that time I had gotten married and we had a child. And so uh, we came back to Bremerton, Washington and stayed there for a while. And then, he, then the ship was moved to uh, San Diego. And then I had to, we had to leave again because the Korean War was still on went out to Korea and bombed the east coast of Korea for a few months and then the war ended. My wife was Adrienne Mouton from Lafayette. She was one of six children, a good, she graduated from a, a College of the Sacred Heart in Grand Coteau and we have had 11 children. My early practice was very simple. Uh, 
uh, we uh, I, I had them, we handled everything except even criminal. In those days, there was a system whereby uh, indigent defenders were given assistance through one of the local council. Your father was one of them, and when your name came up on the list, you had to defend the uh, the, the alleged criminal. And uh, even if it was a, a, a murder case, you had to do it. And you may not have had any experience in that area, but you had to do it because that was, there was no such thing as an indigent defender board or anything like that. And I did real estate litigation, a lot of insurance defense litigation. And uh, then uh, I've, that's evolved. I never did really like litigation. I didn't like the confrontation. I didn't like the, the weekends uh, spent worrying about what was gonna come up on Monday morning. So I never did really go for that. So I'm doing mainly a real estate and succession law now. Uh, transactional law, I guess you'd call it, and uh, no criminal. I don't do any criminal. I don't do divorces. I don't do domestic relations. I've handled some big cases involving a, a lot of money. Uh, uh, one of them was the Tibo case, T-H-I-B-A-U-T, uh, involving a dispute between warring sides of the family. And uh, that was one of my most memorable cases. I got to they were brothers and sisters against brothers and sisters, and uh, and even though some of them were first cousins, they would they split up that way on different sides, and uh, and that was a most interesting case. It was tried in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. I remember going to Donaldsonville and trying that case for several days. It was successful. We got a two million dollar judgment. I never did like litigation because uh, I. Uh, uh, I agonize over the preparations of litigation, and I prefer not to do that. And I don't, I don't have to do it anymore, so I don't do it. Yeah, the, well, you know, I had cases with different lawyers like uh, Lawrence Seymour, Louis Sear, Bob Johnson, Bob Johnson and Milton, Milton LeBlanc were among the first plaintiff lawyers. We didn't have a big plaintiff practice in, until 1950 when it all started to be popular. Young lawyers were, were proliferating and they had to have a way to make money. And so they became plaintiff lawyers. Oil and gas was, was not that open to them at that time unless they had a particular uh, in, in, industry client. And so uh, uh, plaintiff law was the thing that, it, it, and I, I think, uh, and then offshore practice got to be a good practice. You had to know some maritime law. and. Uh, Texaco uh, said that uh, workers on offshore platforms were seamen and uh, went to the U.S. Supreme Court and that popularized the idea of uh, maritime practice and so we all became maritime lawyers of a sort. And that was, that was particularly suited to me because I had gone to the Merchant Marine Academy and I knew something about the Jones Act and maritime law before, uh, before all of that happened. I'm still practicing. I'm still a partner of the firm of Landry, Watkins, Rapask, and Bro. I go, they may want to get rid of me, but they haven't been able to yet. And I don't, I think that I still have my mental acuity, and as long as I do, and as long as I have clients and want to continue practicing, I'm going to do so. Uh, one of these days, I may not realize that I'm losing it, losing it, and I'm sure my wife will tell me, and then I'll have to retire. But. Uh, Right now, uh, nobody has suggested it, and, uh, and I enjoy meeting people. And my practice has changed, of course. I don't, I don't do any litigation anymore. I do mainly successions and titles and contracts and leases and um, transactional law, I think they call it. And, uh, and I enjoy it very much. I enjoy meeting the people and, and uh, having a relationship with the clients. And uh, they keep coming back, so most of them are satisfied, I think. In high school, I, I went to St. Peter's College and uh, it was run by the Christian Brothers and uh, we had 11 grades in those years and uh, there were 11 brothers plus a principal, 12, and they were all very good, very, uh, uh, very demanding and uh, uh, very strict in the way that they handled us. We didn't misbehave. You got out of line, they'd whack you. And, uh, but they were good, strong men. And this was during the 30s. 
during the Depression days, and uh, I've since, fought, mo mo all of them are deceased now, but I had some great brothers, and they're the ones who influenced me the most. Uh, uh, I was an altar boy at St. Peter's Catholic Church over here, and for the long while, an old, uh, an old Frenchman uh, was the pastor, and uh, he influenced me. He, he, he had a sexton named Monsieur Leon, who walked around with his white beard full of stains and wine and tobacco stains, and never, never spoke to us altar boys. And, and he was a bell ringer and a sexton, and but mainly uh, the brothers at St. Peter's College influenced me. And uh, uh, after that, the Birch Reed Academy was okay, and and at Tulane I was influenced by some very good professors, and uh, and so I. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to have had the experience of uh, learning from these men. But mainly the Christian brothers when I was in high school influenced me the most. I was the president of the Louisiana Association of Defense Council, which was an honor accorded me when we had, we had, our, we had our convention in London of that year. And I, I've been president of the Chamber of Commerce. I got the outstanding young Young Man Award in New Iberia. Uh, in, in my life, the most satisfaction has been my family, of course. I had always wanted to have a large family. I married uh, Adrian Mouton from uh, Lafayette, who had the same aspirations, and, uh, and we reared these children. And uh, as I say, there are no serial killers among them. They've all done really well. They're all supporting themselves. And so they have given us the greatest satisfaction. So I would consider that to be our greatest accomplishment.